we've all had an eventful week, I can say. And I just wanted to tell you a cute little story. I've been saving this, but we've never gotten to where we're passing the offering plates again. The little five-year-old boy was finally able to go to the big church with his, his dad and his mom. And as the offering plate came around, he looked at his dad and he earnestly said, Dad, I'm under 10. You don't have to pay for me. Uh, <laughs> that, being, <laughs> that being said, the offering plates are in the back, and in the front we have the white baskets as we come up for communion for our Helping Hand Fund, which I understand is pretty low. So we really need help in that area to help those in our community. Uh, we certainly are a very busy church. I have a lot of announcements, so I'm going to go through these quickly. Um, the youth are going to be doing a Christmas play, and it will be presented on the, the night of the 23rd and also on Christmas Eve. We need kids. So if you have a grandchild or a child, someone that would commit to coming to church and being a part of this, we need them to start coming now. Susan's ready to hand out parts. So if you want the lead, you better come. Uh, Wednesday morning Bible study will begin again on October the 5th. That's in the portable from 9 to 10.30. Uh, handbells are meeting again on Monday, so we do need at least one more player. Um, big, big news. The mortgage burning is Wednesday at 5 o'clock here in the sanctuary. Woo! We are turning off the smoke alarms, I hope. And <laughs> we need to, afterwards, there is a... Uh, a complimentary dinner in the Family Life Center. So let's let's let everybody show up, okay? October is Pastor Appreciation Month. And we definitely want to show Brian and his family how much we appreciate all they do for us. So we're encouraging everybody to get very creative in how they show that appreciation. The youth continue to look for um, outdoor games, gently used. They don't have to be brand new that they can use. Uh, shoe boxes for Christmas with Good Samaritan are now being gathered. If you need to see Colleen or Esther Kershaw with any questions regarding that. Uh, Foodbridge is currently seeking donors to for buying a new insulated truck for food pickup. Additionally, there is lots and lots of food over at the Buddington building today. The food bridge was closed this week um, and the bread bread basket, I believe. So there's lots of food that needs to be um, taken and made good use of. So after service, please go over there. Wreaths Across America, um, you can buy two wreaths for $30 and they will give you one free. This is for Veterans Day. Uh, your check can be made out to Middleburg United Methodist Church and you need to note wreaths on the check. And this is also World Communion Sunday. There is an offering envelope in your bulletin if you would like to put that in to the offering plate. Um, the United w Women in Faith would like to thank all the participants, both those who attended and those who were the models or worked with it for their help with the um, fashion show. They raised close to $600 to go to Miriam's baskets. So thank you for all.
drinks, bottled water, and chips. Those, you can get those boxes of assorted flavors you don't talk about. The bags are about that big. They're one to two ounces. That's what we want. Not a, not a, I'll eat. Uh, but we'll be selling those at the uh, patch, so we need donations of that pretty please. And this will be, I'm going to let somebody take it all the way back there for me and put it by the pumpkin patch sign up in the freezer. And thank you so much. But please, we need we need you to come and take a shift. We're going to be there until October 31 every single day. And so there surely is some place in there that you can find a sign up. Okay, we'll be we'll be kind to you. Thank you so much. Just remember to take your bulletins home with you because there is so much information in there, and we also have many on our prayer roll that we would like to remember. for prayer. <clears throat> Lord of strength and power, we ask that you pour out hope on those who have gone through the trauma of this hurricane. They have many uncertainties to deal with now, and many may be in despair due to all that they have lost. You are the ultimate source of hope for those who trust in you. We pray that you will pour out joy and peace on those who are suffering, and may they overflow with confident hope. As we open our service today, God, increase our faith. Make us into fighters who do not break down. Amen. 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 Oh, here. Well, come on up here. Oh, she always has such good information. Happy information. Happy information. Yes, ma'am. I just wanted to add a couple of things. We kick timers on everything. They unloaded the pumpkins. They started at 9 o'clock. They finished at 11.30. Two and a half hours, they unloaded 2,400 pumpkins. 2,400 pumpkins. And some mean person said to the people that were working, the second truck is on the way. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen such looks of horror. <laughs> but anyway, it's a, it's a, it's a, I'm sure said it's a great, great day, a great fellowship day. And we have little guys um, that work just as seriously as the older people. Uh, they go up between the two big guys that are at the back of the, ta uh, the truck, and they stand down here, and when they get little pumpkins, They'll put them down on the bumper thing down there. And the little guys get the little pumpkins and they walk and to them. They're not little pumpkins, you know, they're mm -hmm. big guys. And they take them and put them in, and they know exactly where to go. So it's, it's just, uh, I didn't move any pumpkins, but I did dirty my shirt so people would think I had. <laughs> but um, it's such a good, good feeling. The second thing I'd like to say is the mortgage burning is this Wednesday night. We're going to meet in the sanctuary at 5 and have a, a bit of a service. Pastor Bob Wannell, who was here with us 18 years ago, when we voted as a church unanimously to build that building back there, is going to be here with us Wednesday. And um, of course, our pastor is going to lead the service. Um, and then we're going to go out. Don't expect a big bonfire. We're not going to have any of this raging bonfire. It's going to be more like a couple of candles together. But we're going to burn that mortgage Wednesday. Um, and take pictures. And take pictures. And then we're going to and pray for no rain. 
and we're going to go to the uh, Family Life Center that we just paid off, and we're going to have a, what's the word? Complimentary. <laughs> Complimentary dinner so you don't have to pay for that. Third thing, and I'm done. We have, um, the land is being surveyed. You might have seen some red paint and stickers sticking up, especially down here on the corner. On the other side of the pumpkin patch, um, our land, we've got a marker sticking up in the air about this far on that paved part. I'm sure it's going to get run over, but we're going to fence our property. Now, I'm not being selfish when I say that. I'm being responsible. Your trustees want this property under fence so we know where the lines are. That's, that's an okay thing. It's costing $5,200 to do that survey. That's not, believe it or not, a bad deal. That money's going to come out of the money for the old church. We had a big amount of money that was donated about four years ago, and we've been real stingy about where that money goes because it was dedicated to the old church. But I can stretch that and say I'm, we are, as a group, putting all that property under fence. So that's the thing that will last forever. You know, we don't have to come back and do this again. But along with that, we're going to have to put in fence. As you know what I'm saying. We're going to have a fence. Not a drive like the mortgage, but we're going to let you know. But um, I have no idea what the fencing will cost. But I want to have nice fence put in, nice gates, and it's going to be all good for the glory of God. Did we pick up some property or? Yeah, and, and resurveying, and they're not finished yet. And resurveying, we've discovered over here in the back, we're picking up about six feet. Or about as far as from here to the back door. Six feet. That's our property. Um, we've got a couple of buildings over here that are on our property. We'll move them off. So, and the situation with the people that bought the property back here, we're told by their surveyor that the line is not where it is. So I knew there was an easement back there for us to get to that back gate. So it's, it's a good thing surveying your land. You pay for it and you need to know where it is and where it is. So thank you so much and hope God blesses you all. Thank you. Ms. Suzanne had a story, so I, I, I can't be outdone, so I got a story. <laughs> Little Johnny, 10 years old, you know, attends the church somewhere with ours, and out back at, near the cemetery, this particular church had a memorial with all the people's names on it. And uh, he was out there looking at it. The pastor walked by and he said, Pastor, he says, what's all these names on this stone? He said, well, Little Johnny, he said, that's people who attended this church that died in the service. He looked up at the pastor and he says, which one, first or second? First? <laughs> <laughs> you ain't carry up, brother. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How about standing on the promises? You think we can do that one? Let's all stand. Wait 374 hours as projected.
left. And uh, I don't want to complain, but we're sounding a little anemic this morning. Uh, there, there's just no volume in here, and I know Roger's doing the best he can, but he needs some help. So let's, uh, let's get on on this last part and let the devil cross the street and over here, okay? Standing on the promises, I cannot fail. Missing every moment to the
good to be with you all. It's that element in our service where we share praises and prayer concerns. And I know you got much on your heart and mind. Some of it made it on paper this morning. So let's start with a praise. Thank you, all of you who showed up and worked yesterday. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Thank you all. Somebody, God bless them, brought a tractor and saved our lives. <laughs> and the team, the, the, the challenge folks uh, came and helped us. That was very nice. So praise God for that. And, and uh, Edna says she teased Abby for about an hour, called her Olive Arms, and she outworked Edna at the pumpkin patch yesterday. <laughs> so that back, back on you there, Edna. So Bonnie asked that we remember Steve this morning. Steve's having some terrible back pain. So y'all, anybody that's ever experienced that, you know how debilitating and depressing it can be. Uh, we've got a few here from Richard. What was up? September 30th, 1956. And you were just an eight-year-old, and you were baptized on that date. And give your life to Jesus Christ as your Savior and born again. All right. <laughs> Amen to that. And of course, we remember Danica. Danica needs some prayers dealing with mental health and improvement and stuff and um, healing. Now you were a victim of a cyber crime? Yep, Richard was a victim of a cyber crime. Need some help figuring that all out and get it fixed in Jesus' name. Anything that's on your hearts, your minds that we didn't lift up, that you want lifted up? Yes, John? Uh, I'd like to pray for Elijah. You know, all this Oh, speaking of back pain. Yeah. All right, Elijah. I also have that one. I think we can get fall. Well, that was great. I don't know what to do. Yeah, it's great weather and great for y'all. Good week and a good fall. I like it. Anybody else? Oh, yes, sir, Bob. Pray for all our brothers down south to have to send you that area. That's right. We remember the folks of southwest Florida and central Florida and a little bit of East Florida, yeah. A lot of our brothers and sisters, families, cousins, nephews, and neighbors are in a bad spot this morning. So we pray for them. Yes, sir. Jim. We all know how big the Daytona track is. Stop and think that in the midst of the storm, the water was so strong that it built in the infield to the tunnels were shooting out water like heavy squirt guns, same back 25 foot across. 50 feet out in the parking lot. That's a lot of water. It was almost three and a half foot deeper on the back stretch of the street. And that's tall. You talk about tower. Mm. That's humbling. Yes, ma'am. Remember my dad? He's still fighting some things. And he's over the water. Seymour, as he recovers and heals post-cancer treatments. Well, if there's nothing else, we all like to come kneel at the altar space. It's open and you're invited to do so now. Or just stay comfortable in your seat. We just need you to pray with us. That's the main thing. Let us pray. We come to you mighty, loving, and gracious Heavenly Father, thanking you for your goodness and your mercy and your love. And we are humbled again by your power and might. We thank you so much that there were many lives spared in this hurricane, Ian, but for many there was devastation and heartache and heartbreaking, just turmoil and tragedy. So we pray for them now, Lord, our neighbors. We lift them up, praying that they be filled with hope and love and energy and that all this stuff that they have to worry about will be taken care of in good time. Thank you for the men and women who come to our aid, our rescue, those who are helping, even right now, giving them their time, talent, and their treasure to put lives back together. Thank you for those people. Watch out for them. And we thank you so much for the pumpkin patch that means so much to this community, means so much to this church. It takes a lot of time and effort, but you've got 
plenty of good resources for that. We just pray that it's a good ministry this year, as always, and that it's a fun place for families to come and visit and take pictures and watch their little ones grow up each year. May we use uh, that resource as the pumpkin patch to really do some good work here in our community as far as funding. So thank you, Lord, and bring the people we pray in Jesus' name. Thank you for hearing our prayers this morning. You know our hearts. You know what's on our minds, what's plaguing us, what's worrying us. We want to just get rid of that stuff right now, give it back, and ask that you take it, Lord, and free us. Free us for joyful obedience. In Christ's name. Thank you for hearing our prayers. I say it again because we are thankful that you're listening and that you're more than capable. So we pray and call on you to come and rescue those who were mentioned, those who needed your help, those who are grieving among us, Lord, those who are celebrating. Just be near, and that'll be enough. We give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name, the one who loved us first. We pray together now, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. Do we decide to do We're in Jeremiah 17 this morning, doing a, a flashback. We were in Jeremiah a few weeks ago, but now we, we're going to revisit it because there's a word directly from the Lord here. And it's a word that's going to be directly to us again. There's some, some warnings, some, some principles to live by, maybe some challenge all wrapped into one little package here. But this is uh, Jeremiah 17, and he's dealing with Judah's sin and their faithlessness, and that they're going to be punished. And so we pick up verse 5 through 10, looking at this little section. Thus says the Lord, Cursed are those who trust in mere mortals and make mere flesh their strength, whose hearts turn away from the Lord. They shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when relief comes. They shall live in the parched places of the wilderness in an uninhabited salt land. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when heat comes, and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of drought, it is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. Here's the problem. The heart is devious above all else. It is perverse. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, test the mind and search the heart to give to all according to their ways, according to the fruit of their doings. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Amen. So, in case you were under a rock somewhere, or hiding out, Eden made landfall in Cuba Tuesday as a Category 3 storm with maximum sustained winds of 125 miles per hour, which would make it at that time the strongest hurricane to make landfall in Cuba since Irma was a Category 5 in 2017. <coughs> and then, of course, it hits Florida on Wednesday as a Category 4, threatening to make 5 at sustained wind speeds of 150 miles an hour. So God bless the people in the wake of that storm. <coughs> so, another one. Backing up a little bit. It was a 
it developed as a tropical wave leaving the coast of Africa on September the 9th, 1989. And within a few days, it became a Category 5 hurricane. In its path were Guadalupe, Montserrat, Puerto Rico, St. Croix, South Carolina, and North Carolina. Mark Lewis, though, and his family were living on the island of St. Croix when Hurricane Hugo struck. He and his wife Angela took their two children into the shower stall and they huddled together while the sounds of fury roared outside. Sorry to bring that sound back to your, your ears. Lewis comments, though, that he had been through some scary moments in his life, but when he ex experienced intense fear, but all that paled in comparison to the terror of Hugo. He stated that he prayed repeatedly for wisdom and courage to do something about whatever the Lord gave him. He prayed that the protector God would hold up the walls around his house and his family. He asked God to spare his wife and his girls because of his own insecurity about his survival. Finally, the relentless winds died down and he risked this one man recognizant mission. He just goes out to inspect the damage. And what does he find? The living room blown away. All their possessions looked like they had been blenderized with equal parts glass, wood, building materials, and rainwater all create this ugly hurricane stew. Lewis realized, though, like much of you have learned, that life is more important than so many of our petty differences and irritations that arise in any relationship. He wrote that he has now a new appreciation between him and his wife <laughs> and in life. So sometimes hurricanes, y'all, can be a good thing. And I know that's stretching it a little bit to say, but I want you to understand that God is in the hurricane. God is with us in the hurricane. Hear me what I did not say, that God is or was the hurricane. That would be too much to say, right? God didn't cause it. God didn't send it. It's a natural occurrence. The physical part of being in nature on a created planet that's harmed and marred by sin, death, destruction, and disease. That's because we got what we wanted, what we asked for. So don't blame God when there's a natural disaster. All right, that was a different sermon. Sorry about that. <laughs> But Judah had been through some devastating circumstances. We're hearkening back now to this Jeremiah and his time. It resembled hurricane force winds. There was Judah's, or Josiah's reforms in 627 B.C. Jeremiah's call to prophetic ministry in 626 B.C. Then a wholesale upheaval following the death of Josiah at the Battle of Megiddo in 609 B.C. and to the Battle of Carchemish in 605 with Emperor Nebuchadnezzar. The first deportation to Babylon occurred in 597 B.C. If y'all know all this already, just pause me at any time. <laughs> okay, we all right to go on? Then the siege of Jerusalem under Pharaoh Hophah in 588 B.C., Hophra, and the fall of Jerusalem in 586 B.C. Folks knew about hurricane force winds. Is it any wonder we need divine help and rescue and strength? I think our text lends itself to help us learn some lessons, uh, especially when it comes about hurricane force winds that occasionally hit our lives. And they will. If they haven't yet, they will. Uh, we live in a world of high-rise apartments, gated communities, fenced-in homes, designated to keep people out. And isn't that a striking con contrast with our God? He delights in meeting with people. He offers His love and availability at every turn of our lives. He desires an intimate connection with us. 
And I think you all know that, Christians in here this morning. And how do we teach our young people what love really means? How do we spell it? T-I-M-E. That's how you spell love, right? And that's how you show it and experience it. Most of us have it that way. Humanity is God's parish. Remember John Wesley said, the world is my parish? He was almost there. It's God's and all of it. But God comes to seek and save all people who desire His divine love. Amen? Amen. And so we, we want to be a part of that. Um, I encounter God in life's hurricanes. Is that enough that we can say that safely? That we encounter God in life's hurricanes? I mean, it's when I pour my life into His life and He pours His life back into my empty vessel until it's overflowing. And then I've got blessings to give and to share. Something that radiates, though, not really from me, is it? But from God, God's self. And that should give courage. That should give hope in the face of life's storms. So another hurricane disaster forms the backdrop for the story of courage and hope. It's now uh, an account from New Orleans. Y'all remember this one? You know where I'm going? Katrina, 2005. High and Libya, Libya McHenry worked as missionaries with child evangelism in New Orleans' inner city. Thousands of children put their trust and faith in Jesus Christ during their nine-year ministry. One of those was a young man by the name of Herbert. Starting at age nine, Herbert was faithfully taught the Bible and its promises. Herbert had a personal encounter with God that began, and it began to develop a love for Jesus as a child. He was filled with courage and hope that reached out to others in his community. Here's where it gets good. When Herbert was 14, he started a little church in the small kitchen of his house. He preached and his five sisters sang uh, choruses. <laughs> and he would preach about Jesus' love and salvation. 30 people would cram into the little kitchen and hear the message and the prayers. These precious children were praying praying hard, praying for their surrounding community that was devastated way before Katrina ever hit. The children prayed for their loved ones who were lost and in prison. They prayed for America, New Orleans, and the corrupt politicians and city government. They prayed for their school. They prayed for deliverance. Four years they met in the kitchen of Herbert's house. When Katrina hit, of course, Herbert, his mother, Five sisters were forced to leave their home. Now he's 18 and the man of the house. He watched as their house floated away and the seven of them were evacuated to the Superdome. It was there that he would witness dead bodies, suicide, rape, knifings, shootings, looting, and continuous cries for rescue and help. A physical hurricane had damaged their lives, but much greater was the hurricane of despair. Herbert asked God what to do and how to help these people living in despair inside the Superdome. As he prayed, God filled Herbert with His holy presence. Has this ever happened to anybody in here? I wonder. He began to show Herbert what to do. Herbert started to march around the Superdome. As he did, he sang gospel songs and choruses. Little by little, people joined him. And before long, there was a second line doing the same thing. Then people began to pray audibly, calling out to God for help and rescue. Herbert knew then that this was what God had for him to do. He talked to people in small, impromptu Bible studies. And within a day, there were 50 meeting informally both in the morning and in the evening before curfew. Church broke out, y'all, in other words. And it can happen. Finally, Herbert and his family were relocated to Lake Charles, Louisiana. But again, tragedy struck as yet another hurricane hit. Hurricane Rita. Once again, they were evacuated. But God was filling Herbert's heart with His presence. And it was just after a short time 
They were moved away to Iowa. God used a congregation there to, that was yielded to God to help Herbert, his family, and several others from the congregation to their state where they assisted them with housing and food, etc., etc. But doesn't that just show you the power from inside the hurricane? Right? There's lots of forms of power. There are power to change things, power to change people, even in the midst of some of life's most tragic experiences. Jeremiah, looking at verse 7 through 8, says, Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when heat comes, and its leaves shall stay green in the year of drought. It is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. So we can exist with God in life's hurricanes. And they all experienced a few, so you've learned a few of these lessons along the way. But if you haven't, we need to hear it this morning. Verse 6 says that there will be like a desert shrub that exists in the desert in parched lands. Does that sound like a place any of us want to be, metaphorically speaking? Uh -uh. No. Uninhabitable salt, it not only lacks water, but it's poisonous to plants and people. But however, God wishes to bless us. <laughs> and you'll feel just like that little one. <laughs> but he says, I want to bless. And it's Baruch. In Hebrew, it means to kneel. So it's to ask God for a blessing. And what Jeremiah desire, desires is for us to live from the outside inward. But we must live to do that in God's grace. William Barclay, a great commentator and writer on the Bible, says grace is not only a gift, it's a grave responsibility. A man cannot go on living the life he lived before he met Jesus Christ. He must be clothed in a new purity, a new holiness, and a new goodness. The door is open, but the door is not open for the sinner to come and remain a sinner, but a sinner to come and become a saint. Now we're all becoming saints, right? We're on our way to perfection, we like to say. But what is it to be a saint? That's part of this living from the outside in and the inside out stuff. Being connected with God is as easy as it is. If I say something that makes sense to you and it's true, just amen it, okay? All right. If if you live from the inside out, we'll listen to God's directions. We'll enjoy the fellowship of God. We'll master the world and not allow the world to master us. We'll move steadily toward God. We'll conform to God's character. We'll be passionate for Christ. We receive the power of the Holy Spirit to conquer the ravages of sin and then radiate the love of Christ to others. So I think to exist in life's hurricanes is to exist in Christ. Examine the heart in the hurricane of life. Jeremiah 17.10 uh, here says, I the Lord test the mind and search the heart. So He tests the mind and searches the heart. But it, here's why. He wants to give all things according to our ways. That don't have to be bad. That can be good. The fruit of your doing doesn't have to be evil. He confesses, though, his own inadequacy to know himself, doesn't he? And it's exciting, though, to learn what God tells Jeremiah is that he, God, knows this already. He understands. He gets this. Someone said that God knows the thoughts and feelings and He gives to a man according to his actions. Some of you may see that working itself out in your life already. You reap what you sow, don't you? So what should be in our hearts as we encounter God as we close? It should be a heart that is sensitive to God. A heart that can rejoice in the Lord. A heart that is ready to be shaped and molded as a living sacrifice at the altar of faith. A heart that allows God's touch in. And that it can change you. A heart that is giving and offering itself for others. And that thanks God for His grace. I ask you this morning, how is 
your heart. Hurricanes do come. They hit hard and sometimes persistently. I don't know about you, but I want my life to reflect uh, what William Channing, he was a clergyman and minister, reformer, in 1810 to 1884, he wrote, to live content with small means, to seek elegance rather than luxury, and refinement rather than fashion, to be worthy, not respectable, and wealthy, not rich, to listen to stars and birds, babes and sages with an open heart, to study hard, to think quietly, to act frankly, talk gently, Await occasions. Hurry never. In a word, to let the spiritual, unbidden, and unconscious grow up through the common. This is my symphony. I love that last line. Let me hear God's music in my heart while the storm passes by. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let the storm pass by and let Jesus be in my heart. So if you have your hymnals with you this morning, we get to transition into a time of holy communion together. And this way we can engage it as people of faith. We have a beautiful invitation. Christ our Lord invites to His table all who love Him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> so this is an open table in the United Methodist Church. It doesn't belong to us. It's open meaning you don't have to be a member here. You're invited also. We'll go back to the intention this morning where there'll be a little piece tore off for you. You put it in your hand and dip it, keeping your fingers out of the juice if all possible. We also have little cups available if you want to just come through the line and I can hand you one of those. The Lord be with you. And also you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth, Holy are you, and blessed is your Son Jesus Christ by the baptism of His suffering, death, and resurrection you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night which He gave Himself up for us, He took the bread, gave thanks, blessed it, broke it, gave it to the disciples, saying, This is my body broken for you. Take, eat, remember me. Likewise, after the supper, Jesus takes the cup, gives thanks to the Father, blesses it, offers it to the disciples, saying, This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink it often. Remember me. Receive me.
And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and juice. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ. That we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by His blood. By your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. Until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at His heavenly banquet. Through your Son Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in your holy church all honor and glory is yours. Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. If our servers would come, we'll let musicians go first and then the ushers will lead you as we work our way back. Invited, you confess your sins, let us come. Yeah. <laughs> Please join us as we close with uh, Let There Be Peace on Earth and Praise the Lord.
in the power of God Almighty, the love of Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of His Holy Spirit. Let that bring us peace. Amen. We're close, but must be the tie that binds. <laughs>
on the street one day. Oh! <laughs> 